many years ago, in the early 80s, I was so frustrated at that time about America, and I was praying. If you read my book, Possessing the Gates, I wrote about this, and, and I was noticing I couldn't find any prayer groups for ministries. You know, I was calling all these ministries, can I speak to your prayer leader? They didn't have any, and the only ones they had didn't pray for the ministries. They prayed for, like, their prayer partners or people who gave money. And then I was calling churches, and I hardly found any churches that had intercessory prayer groups. And then I tried to find a book that was written on intercessory prayer. There was a lot of books on, on how to pray, but not spiritual warfare. And I went place after place. You know, we didn't have Amazon then. I went place after place trying to find a book on intercession and spiritual warfare. And I was so frustrated. Do you know what holy frustration is? It's the finger of God right in your face. It's God saying to you, why not you? Say, why not me? There isn't a person here, man or woman, that I am not targeting. I am giving you fair warning. If you want to leave, you can do it now. Because from this night and this moment, you are going to be commissioned. There's something that's going to stir in you. I hope you can't sleep over this. I hope there's something inside of you. You see, so I began to say, I must do something. And then I tried to find ministries that were praying together in the Dallas area. I couldn't find ministries that prayed together. And so I was saying to God, God, what has happened to America? And he said, Satan has a strategy for this nation, and my people do not call together the generals. And repent of the sin of the nation. Okay, I grew up in church all my life. I never heard one sermon talk about repenting for the sin of my nation. I remember talking to my friend John Dawson. He's now president of YWAM. And I was telling John how God told me to pray and repent for the sin of nations. And, and, you know, he was talking about how he was hearing of that. We didn't even call it identification or repentance. Some of this terminology we didn't get until we formed the spiritual warfare network and we decided to come together, uh, just a group of 30 of us, and we adopted George Otis Jr.'s spiritual mapping and John Dawson's identification or repentance, and we decided just to take language that was a prayer evangelism from Ed Savoso. And we just began to pull a whole glossary of terminology. And the Lord told us if we do this, it'd go viral across the world, and it did. And so anyway, so we began to pray together. We began to call ministries to pray together. And the rest is history. And we have met with many generals since then. We built prayer networks across the Silk Road, all across Asia, you know, and, and, and we've just built strong, strong networks. I remember sitting in mainland China yeah! with the... Five <laughs> yeah. God loves the Chinese. And I was with the five heads of the underground church house movement, and they said, Cindy, your book, Possessing the Gates, we started prayer in all of China with that book. You see, but out of that time of frustration came the need to write a book. And some people say... Well, I could have written that book, Possessing the Gates, and I say, but you didn't. <laughs> there's some that do, and there's some that dream, and there's some that just talk about it. The time for talking is over, yeah. and the time for doing is now. There was a time in this nation where we had 10 years to think about it. We don't even have six months to think about it now. We have got to pray and we have got to act. We have got to stir ourselves up. Every one of you has to say, what can I do? What can I do to save a nation? 
We have got to put our name on the line and when we are called up to the army of God. And whether you run for school board or whether you speak up against, uh, uh, you know, things like gender confusion. Listen, if we don't give any pushback, we're toast. We're done. Jesus went to the cross for us. He took 40 stripes upon his back, or 39 stripes upon his back for us. And we're afraid of somebody criticizing us? We're not meant to be mice. We're meant to be mama bears and papa bears. We're those who are going to say, we're going to take the children of Canada and the children of the United States and the children of our nations, and we're going to say, Satan, you're not going to pollute them on my watch. As for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Acts 13, 36. For David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. When you stand before the throne of God, will God say you served my purpose in your generation? You did it all? Or did you say, oh, I was too shy. I was too timid. I was too short. I was too fat or whatever. There's always some excuse. This is a no excuse zone. It's also a no whining zone. I have a sign in our office that says, thou shalt not whine. Each of you is valuable, crafted by God, given a full destiny, given a voice. So I remember a lady I met, uh, uh, I was in um, TBN in Portland, Oregon. She came up and she was paralyzed from the waist down. And she said, what can I do for God? And I said, can you write letters to prisoners? And she said, yes, I can. And she just started writing prisoners, got names of, of prisoners and started a huge ministry just of encouraging prisoners. You see, God will give you the ideas. If you put in the prayer equity and listen to him, God will show you what to do. He will show you what he requires of you when I stand before the throne of God. I want him to say, there was nothing I ask of you, no matter how hard, no matter what it cost you, no matter what persecution, no matter what news media in America mocked you, I've been on a list of 10 things to ridicule in the New York Times. Badge of honor. Come on. 